All right, guys, we will see what the future holds for my channel and for the content as a whole. But as a, if nothing else, parting gift for you guys, uh, I figured I would do a video talking about my top four survival recommendations for survival knives for 2024. Without any further ado guys, let's jump right into the list. Now, as per usual, when I do these lists, I usually go from cheapest to most expensive. So that is the order we will be keeping it in and we're gonna jump right into it. So first off, we have the cheapest one up on the list, I believe, um, at least in the order that we're gonna mention them or in, you know, option wise. And that is the Verista Leica Scrama 200. Now, I mistakenly call this a 210 because my saw blade for my Silky, my Silky Gomboy is a 210, so I get the these two kind of mixed up, um, but this one is a 200. You can get a 240 that's slightly larger. But for me, in my opinion, when it comes to decently sized survival knives, especially, you know, like in a seven plus inch uh, blade length, very capable for doing outdoorsy tasks, the Scrama is one of the hardest knives to beat because of the level of performance and the just overall value that this thing offers. You have a rubberized handle, a beefy full tang blade. Um, you have a 80 CRV2 blade steel. And despite much of what I say, I'm not a huge, you know, like anti 80 CRV2 person. I just think that 80 CRV2 used on custom knives, very expensive knives, isn't really worth it um, in those kinds of arenas. I think this is a very value oriented steel and it for something like this first like a Scrama that is about a $70 knife. It really does offer a tremendous amount of value in this use application and I will give it this ADCR V2 does tend to be a better chopper knife or a knife that chops things uh, type steel because of its um, impact resistance. So you're trading edge retention um, and durability of that edge for I guess ultimately just shock better shock resistance like the edge the durability of it the edge will be good like it's not going to chip out or break but it will go dull more quickly because it is not as hard of a steel um so the wear resistance is a little bit less but the shock resistance is a little bit more hopefully that makes sense but overall the scrama 200 or 240 is going to be one of the best value oriented options on this list that i can recommend all right, next one up is going to be none other than the Cold Steel SRK. Now, the reason why this one isn't below the Scrama, even though the base level Recon Scouts and SRKs are cheaper, is because this is a CPM 3V model. I really do wish they'd make the Recon Scout in CPM 3V, but for sakes of conversation here, we have the Cold Steel SRK in CPM 3V, and this knife is really probably one of the best all around just overall outdoor knives especially with the cpm 3v variant under a hundred dollars you can get these from midway usa um, when they go on sales for uh 990 or 99.99 so just a penny under a hundred dollars but to be honest even at that essentially hundred dollar um, price point this offers an incredible amount of value for what it is and a lot of people always go in the comments and they're like oh you know those things break so easily if you really don't believe me, there is plenty of videos, even testing this CPM 3V model um, here on YouTube. Both myself, other people have legitimately tested these knives, hard use outdoors. They do not break. And so it frustrates the heck out of me. But if you don't take my word for it, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe my videos that I've done, um, go watch. There's plenty of other videos. I recently saw one from a wilderness channel. I'm forgetting the name of, honestly, I'd probably mention him, um, but he's much larger than my channel myself. Um, where he just did a YouTube short where he took the knife um, and struck it um, on the side like this with a wooden baton um, while it was slightly propped up against a piece of wood, struck it. And of course, bent the steel um, a little bit, but uh, he was a purposeful tr attempt to destroy the knife. And so, um, the Cold Steel SRK is a lot stronger than most people sit there and make it out to be. These knives are not weak. Um, the, by no means is this is the freaking Cold Steel SRK a garbage knife that's just gonna snap in half the moment you try to baton it. Those people that say that um, are just straight up lying to you. 
All right, next one up, if you want to go for a smaller but still incredibly tanky option, is the Topps Fieldcraft. Now, this one is starting to get a little bit more expensive than I would like to see it, but the Topps Fieldcraft has a long standing reputation of being incredibly durable, incredibly useful, and for its overall size, a very, very capable tool. It's not going to be it's not going to be on the same level as a larger knife like the Scrama in its capabilities, but it's also not a useless knife. So the Topps Fieldcraft in 1095, particularly the one in 154CM really doesn't deserve to be mentioned, but the Topps Fieldcraft is one that does deserve uh, some airtime. And I, I do have to say personally, one of my favorite comments I got recently when I talked about me using knives is there was someone in the comments, I think they were actually being legitimate about it, but they were accusing me of purposely uh, putting fake use on this knife to make it seem like I had used it more than I really have. I, I can't make this stuff up, guys. Honestly, if you've watched, I have videos using this very Fieldcraft knife from over 10 years ago on this channel, public, live, for everyone to view. And so it's so funny when people like roll into the comments, they're like, oh, he you know, purposely made that knife look used. And it's like true, I haven't used every single knife to the highest extent. This one has seen a lot of use more than others, but um, I don't make make up any of the use case of this stuff. And like I said, there's like public videos that are accessible by anyone to see this stuff. So I find it really hilarious, but yeah. Anyways, getting on to the next one, we have the Architect Knives 6.5 in CPM 3V. Now this one's also available in Magnet Cut, and you guys have known uh, that this is my go-to recommendation in place of or as a stopgap for survive knives because this knife is very similar, especially in blade profile to things like the GSO 5.1 that I have as well. Um, so if you're looking for a knife that would be made by survive, or as I like to say, one of my commenters said surprise knives, I think that's pretty clever. Um, but survive, they do not make a quality product. Well, they do make a quality product, but they don't deliver on it. So it's not very trustworthy, but this right here is a really solid knife and architect is a really awesome company. They got me my knife um, within a week, like within seven days. Um, they had it from the time that I had customized it, placed the order, and to my door um, in under seven days. So great knife, great company. It is at the top end of this spectrum, and they are close to $200. Um, it, depending on how you spec them out, you know, you can get cheaper or more expensive options uh, for handles, blade steels, and sheaths but really great company, love them to death. All right, last up, we have a runner-up, and this one is really quite cool. The most expensive, and this is not on the top four, but really just an awesome knife, and that is Bark River Knives with their Strike Force 2. Now, obviously, this one's a little bit more gussied up. It's a little bit more pretty, but this one's also made out of CPM 3V, and I love the gentle recurve on it. Just an awesome knife. If you're really looking to go all out, like, so there's a reason why this one's a runner-up. It's just... In my opinion, when I pick knives to do these top uh, four comparisons, I try to give you guys knives that I think offer incredible amounts of value for their price. And so for me, I don't think that this Bark River is bad. It's just especially because it has the fancy handles, the mosaic pins, all, all this stuff, right? Um, it just ends up costing, you know, close to $350. And for this price, you know, you can go get a Cold Steel SRK and CPM 3V for hundred bucks as opposed to this Strike Force 2 that's also in CPM 3V for closer to 350 bucks. So once again, this is a runner up. This isn't officially on the list, but I thought it's a worthy mention because it is very well made and it's still made out of quality materials. And even though this is very fancy, this is very beautiful, it's very pretty, you can still absolutely turn around and totally use this as a bushcrafting or survival knife. And I have. And so in my opinion, it's, it's beautiful, but it's also totally functional. However, it doesn't quite fit with the mantra of these other knives. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. We'll see what the future of the channel holds. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.